There's like 70. 70? Yeah. And, do you and have all volunteer, age ranges. Volunteer coaches? Yeah, so it's me, Chase, Zana, and then Tony Rodriguez is coming. Uh-huh. Um, just because she but wanted to get a But just the four of you and you guys yeah. handle 70? Yeah, kids? so I do. That's a lot. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing like a serving and passing yeah. clinic. And then Zana's doing defense. Chase is doing something else. Uh-huh. And then we do like a little exhibition at night. And love it. it. Love yeah. it. What do they charge the kids about? I have no idea. That's yeah. a good that's a good good deal. It's a great deal. And that's it's super fun. fun. And do they take care of you coming out? Mm-hmm. Jeez. Not bad. <laughs> I got the Chase, invite. Yeah, oh, Chase asked you. if I wanted to do it. I was like, uh yes. Yeah. Yes I can. That's, cool, <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah. And that's a cool like how Montana that's kind of random. I've always yeah. wanted to go out there. It was actually. when I went to the one in mm-hmm. Boise. I was surprised because, one, I didn't know that Boise State had a beach volleyball team. And, two, they're pretty good. They almost won their conference and got into uh, NCAA championships. And it's a beach-only program, so they don't use indoor crossovers. I figured a program like Boise State would just be a bunch of indoor people. Yeah. Wow. And And they're D1? Yeah. They're in the same conference as uh, New Orleans. Do you know what conference UNO is in? I don't. I think they lost to... Texas A&M Corpus Christi maybe in the finals. Okay. Like yeah. One of those schools. There's nine conferences now, um, and I don't know every one of them, but everyone has an automatic qualifier, which is huge. where are you guys going? Uh, Obviously, big, you, big question. Yeah, because yeah, USC, you're Big Ten, but there's no Big Ten. Yeah. Well, if if like Big we Ten, right? Go I can't. UCLA and Nebraska. That's three. You need six teams to. Uh, like certify yeah. it as an official conference. The dream would be to get three more Big Ten schools involved yeah. because that it would be expanding so much. But uh, I think it's that's kind of uh, down the road. Yeah, um, I think it can happen. I think it's just a little bit down the road. So in the meantime, either we create a new conference, join a conference. Yeah. Um, but what I've been told is we probably will not be associated with the Pac-12 in any capacity. It's a kind of a bummer for beach fans. Yeah, but I mean think about it if we created a real powerful conference with you know UCLA and LSU and FSU and GCU and TCU yeah. and, and Oh yeah. You know what I mean like that there's no uh I mean everyone's a top team. Yeah. And what conference that would are... be pretty cool to watch like a game of the week totally. or, oh, yeah. or something. Heck yeah. What conference so Florida State and TCU they're are they in the different they're in... C C S A. Okay. Um I think they're I think they're in the same. I know Florida State and L S U, um, they're all in that. Okay. And and so Yeah, there's options. It's just a matter of figuring out what um what's best. Yeah, um, but we'll see. That they, they've been asking me quite a bit, of administration, a bit. to figure out kind of what we want to do. But um, yeah, you know, I would like to see the season expand a uh, week, maybe on the. Fr- well, I don't think you can expand it any earlier because of weather, right? Um, so maybe a two weeks on the end. Yeah, because right now it's landing on the same weekend as men's volleyball, the national championship, right. which. Hmm. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Spread it out, yeah. Uh, at least a week, and that would give us some more time to play. Yeah. But um, it's a relatively short season. Last week of February we start. Yeah. Then you have all of uh, March, all of April, and then the finals are right there in the first week. Right. So it, it's it's fast. It Sprint. could be a little longer. Um, but so much expansion's taking place, right? From eight teams to sixteen in the national yeah. championship. Um. It was funny because I was on the 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 NCAA committee mm-hmm. for the, some of those decisions. It was cool to be try to be as influential as possible when they when they okayed the sixteen teams. A lot of people wanted to wait for another year, and I said, you know, let's do it immediately because yeah. you never know what can change. And um, also, the, when the single elimination came up last year, I said, let's. Let's do this. You know, I think it's just more compelling. I remember for the, you were a proponent of that yeah, last time when yeah. we had you on, and then it became single limb. I was yeah. like, "Got his wish." Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it, 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 I just think it's better for the sport. I think there's so many fans that don't understand single limb, right? Mm-hmm. How to try play on Saturday and might have had a loss, and now you're in the finals. Yeah. It's kind of 
if you know volleyball, you know it. If you right. don't know volleyball, you're a little confused. Um, and I, uh, you know, I'd love to get your take because you're still playing, but it seems like we continue to do double elimination because we've always done it that way. Yeah, and that's usually the mm-hmm. only answer. <laughs> Anything yeah. but pool play, I'm happy with. <laughs> Anything but I, you know what I like and. All these things that I'm like curious to hear your point because you're in it right now is, and I never got to play it, but the the modified pool play where it's like a mini bracket, right. I think that's awesome. Like how we do on the world tour? Yeah. Where you have the four, right. because you can't, yeah, manip- yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't manipulate it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Regular pool play yeah. can be manipulated. Right. You know, it's the third match of the pool and uh, you're 2 and 0 oh, and regardless if you win or lose, you're still coming out number 1 in your pool and the things can get dicey that right. way. But I think the modified where it's like a mini semis yeah. and finals is is clean. How come you don't like well, pool if you, play? you you have to have the right number of teams. Uh-huh. So with the 24 team modified and they're starting to see this a lot on the world tour is that if you win your first pool play match, okay. your second one's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Because you're both coming out in the ninth place rounds They should way. give a bye to that team. That... Even with the modified? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you come out first or second, winners, uh-huh. you're still starting in the round of 16. You get a better seat. You're playing for yeah. a better seating, but now on the World Tour, it's like... It's too deep. It doesn't... But yeah, you're like, in. Man. Trevor and them, like... But you're in. But you're in. Yeah, yeah you can, it. like, be like, I'm going to rest the match and so just it puts gamble a... that I'll get a better draw anyway. So it puts a ton on the first round. The first, the first round, first is round huge. of pool play is like, that's it. Yeah, 100%. Interesting. But See, I knew you, I was going to be educated here. Could you <laughs> give a buy another, maybe make the, the draw bigger and then give a buy to that second match of pool play? So the winner of the whole pool gets a buy. And then the, so the winners play, the losers play, right? The losers are playing just to get into that lucky loser yeah. right? match. The the person who loses the, the winner's round is automatically in, but the person who wins the whole pool as a whole gets a buy. Yeah. Well, I think that's the way it would work if you did a 16-team modified. Oh, right. You'd we're be all, straight to fifth, though, which is a little weird to get right, straight to fifth. Right, where all the ones though, would but... come out with that buy, and then the twos and threes would play in the pigtails. Uh, um, right. But with a 24, 24 is a weird number. Because if you do a double a limb, you, you'll have eight buys. If you win so your... 32. 32, I think, is the perfect number. <laughs> but 16, like if you do a 16-team single limb, su- like you said, super easy to understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's super compelling for television. Because mm-hmm. every match is very interesting. Yeah, true. Because it's, it's an elimination. Right. But pool play is weird because I, so, I commentated Trevor and Theo's second match of pool play and uh, where you guys were... Your Mala. Latvia, yeah, yeah. And... Theo's skyballing, they're split blocking, they're just sort of wandering around. Because it's a toss up where you're ending up. Right. And, and they then didn't... they ended up getting a good draw anyway, right? Right. Pretty good. I mean, like, Got it. not any Got it. Yeah. better or worse than other people's draws. But yeah. I was looking at the math because, like, Australia wins your pool. Right. And they end up playing the number two seed in the tournament. Whereas exactly. you got second in pool and you played the Estonians were eight. I think the Estonians right. are a, a better team than Ukraine, but the math didn't work out. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Australia technically got punished for winning pool. Yeah. Even though they didn't. <laughs> that's, right. Yeah, that's interesting. There's, there's some ins and outs that I wasn't aware of. But um, I think what you're saying, as long as there's something on the line. There's got to be something on the line. Like, because exactly. the first round, it's huge. You win it. The two losers are fighting for their life. Right. Right? So there's no problem there. And right. then those that first and second team needs to be fighting for an advancement mm-hmm. and a, a buy and yeah. a draw. If it's not, if it's a toss up yeah. and like I can get second and end up in better shape than who got first, then there's a problem. Yeah. yeah. So the double limb allows it to where if you lose at any point, th- now you go into fight for your life bracket. And if not, then you're like skipping rounds, yeah. you know, double skipping. So it, that works. But the single limb for fans, mm-hmm. It's just fun, right? It's just like every match is just... Because it means so That's what you want. That's what you want with the sport. You want every match to mean a lot, right? Imagine, imagine this. And this, I think, puts it into real terms. If the NCAA basketball tournament 
Oh, it's double lamb. <laughs> the top lame. seeds would all be yeah, lame. Top seeds yeah. would always be. At but the it top. would be lame be because top. all these buzzer beater winners, 100%. upsets don't mean anything right. because now you can bounce back. Right. Yeah. And it's the thing. I mean, it would ruin that tournament. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. It would ruin that tournament. So it's funny, actually. I mean, I actually respect it a lot that it's coming from you because you guys are usually loaded and powerhouse favorites to win and. Double a limb is better for teams like that. Yeah, no question. Right? You're like, if mm-hmm. we have a bad match, we know we can bounce back, and we yeah. probably will. Yeah, it's like so, if you want the best team to win and assure that as a promoter or whatever, then double limb mm-hmm. is going to, you know, it's like, of course, you give Phil Dahlhauser in his prime, <laughs> you know, five opportunities, he's probably going to make exactly, you pay on right. four of them. Like right. you beat him on, you beat him on that one. And, yeah. Oh, he's still, he's still here. You got to go beat him again in the final, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, Oh, great. A lot of people were, like you said, with, with the call, the collegiate part, they were asking me like, you know, isn't it better for, like you said, a top team because you have more chances. If someone does sting you, mm-hmm. you can come back. But every championship, and I think uh, it's less so for the number one spot. So there's been seven national championships given out. Mm-hmm. We've won five of them. UCLA's won the other two. I think one time UCLA came out of the loser's bracket to win it. Every every mm-hmm. other championship, the winner of the winner's bracket went on to win the whole tournament. Yeah. So... Mm-hmm. Now, you talk about second place and third place, that gets really a lot more squirrely with right. double a limb. Mm-hmm. But the winner of the tournament, I think, I, I, I thought was going to be, you know, it was going to be the same. I don't think it it changes other than gives you another shot at it. Um, but nine out of ten times, we've seen the winner of the, the winner's bracket just go on and win right. yeah. anyway. So. Yeah, and, as it should be. And you guys made a great run in the loser's bracket. That one year where were you when head coach? Stetson, you Stetson? No, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't there that year. I okay. think that was twenty nineteen. Okay, and they lost first round, and then they uh, battled all USC the way back to the final. Yeah. yeah, and they battled all the way back, and I think it was yeah they played UCLA in the final. They beat LSU in the semis, and then that team was really reliant on the top three teams to to sweep every time. Yeah. And um, they did it against LSU to get into the finals, and then uh, UCLA got them. Because uh, I think every time that I have coached as a as an assistant or a head coach, and we've won the championship, um, that's five times. Every time we've won at either the four or five spot. Huh. Like depth depth is so key. Win right. that. I think it's like a lot of championship teams, right? Yeah. It's it's, a team that has that six man or, or yeah, that, yeah. That. Same thing, yeah. Like same the thing like O line or whatever. You might know. not get all the attention, but that's the cornerstone yeah. of when you're up against it. Is yeah. everyone contributing? Yeah. You know, I think it's very difficult. You know, maybe five, six years ago you could have gone with those top six athletes, mm-hmm. those top three teams. And now the margins are just too slim. Yeah. It's, it's so, so deep and so competitive. And especially when you get to that one spot, I mean, you know, a year ago we had like Tina Gradina yeah. who's coming back from the Olympics, <laughs> you know, and then <laughs> right. this year, you know, uh, Daniela for TCU, uh, a Spanish player. I think they're taking the year off next year, but she'll probably make a run at Paris. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Spain, and you know Megan Crafts out there trying to make yeah. it, and so you're you're talking these players are, you know, some of the best in the world. Right. You know they're they're up there competing with the the big dogs, and it's pretty cool. The I, I just have a blast with the collegiate format. It's so it's fun. And awesome. There's so many storylines. Yeah. And oh, how it, fun would it be if we could bring that international? You know, be the yeah. best. Some people. I I got that question the other day. Could do I think the Olympics will change to this kind of format? Whoa, that would be wild. With like, even if it's can just you do three it with teams. less? Can you do it with less teams? Does it work? Yeah, you three do it with teams, three, whatever, right? Yeah, you do it three, and you have. Th- huh. I mean, how I don't cool think Norway that be? would like that. Right. <laughs> how well, there's cool four moles that? now; they could find a way. Yeah, they'd still be good, but 
they would all be, would, they would uh, all be, moles. be much less. But imagine that having six players make yeah. the team. Yeah, that would be cool. Because that's God, what they're doing. That awesome. in Europe right now, it's, it's I think it's called the Nations Cup, okay. where it's it's three teams. It's that format, and uh, so really? I mean, oh. if you look at like Italy yeah. is a powerhouse. The Dutchies are a powerhouse. Oh, yeah. It's super fun, and it's cool to see. We talk about it a lot that like you never root for your own countrymen because right. they're mm-hmm. your biggest rivals. But it's cool to see now Adrian's rooting for like Nikolai <laughs> and Lupo nice. and Rossi. It's fun to see like that different atmosphere. Is he though? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to ask. <laughs> yeah, I even think, in that setting, <laughs> I think those events have done pretty well. Every like all the stuff I've seen, the crowds are big and people are into God, it. That sounds so fun. Yeah, It'd be cool. To do that before I retire. Even if we throw it ourselves. Yeah. Just need a few hundred Gs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone out there? It would be fun to see, though, if the Olympics did change their format to that. That would be fun. That'd be wild. It would be... Uh... Three teams qualified. That would make my life a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, and I think it's getting easier to do it now because the game's gotten so big. Mm-hmm. Where I, I don't know. I can't think of many countries who don't have three decently competitive mm-hmm. teams. Sweden. Mm-hmm. They would not be stoked. Yeah, they won a really good one, and then a couple of like youngsters in the qualifier. Like, but yeah, they wouldn't be stoked on it. But Germany's got a, a lot of good talent. The Dutchies, yeah, like all, of, pretty much all of Europe would be, and Brazil, yeah, Estonia. <laughs> yeah, Estonia might have some problems. Latvia. Yeah, whatever. It'd It'd be be fun fun. It would be fun, or even just like a series. You know, like we have the gold series. That's the na- the whatever nation's cup series yeah but like a part of the world tour it's like there's something to win there right yeah i feel like that's part that's the the big thing in our sport there's not always like something big to win right on the line which is like the formats we're talking about like that's what fans want that's what everyone wants yeah you want the pressure of you want to watch athletes under pressure and playing for something yeah to win something big or lose something big and we don't always have that for example mel the the canadian girls (laughs) did their finances after they won latvia yeah an amazing event to win they came out did they post them or they lost money because they had to change their, their they made their flight too tight to the final, so yeah. they had to change it. Yeah. And it ended up the cost of the whole trip was more than their five grand they won. Oh, for like a, a like that's a huge event to win. Yeah. yeah. That, it it was it was not an elite sixteen though. No, it was, it was a, a challenger. challenger. But like it's challengers tough. are elites now. Like they're base right. they're they're the, very the, watered down the elites. The caliber of volleyball is it's it's there. Yeah, the caliber's insane. And they lost money. That's embarrassing. Like, what are Dagger. as a fan of the sport, you're just like, why am I watching this? <laughs> like, they're that's playing un- to not lose money. <laughs> that is, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. What I what I like about the college format though is, like you said, every court's the same. Court one is worth a point. Right. Court five yeah. is worth a point. And I'm curious, recruiting wise, what is there like a certain strategy to recruiting because beach is such an interesting sport scholarship wise because mm-hmm. you have six right that you can chop mm-hmm. up yeah. however you want and i always talk to delaney about this where i'm like would it be better to just get six really good players just put them on a full ride like six court one talents so you could just do full ride one through three and then walk on, well, on the way down but yeah now it's risky. Then you got a sweep right top. or you could try to spread them out with walk-ons yeah, and that's what I'm curious about. But it with depends. how many girls there are playing now. It all depends on because it's not an equal playing field because mm-hmm. every school costs a different price point. Right. So yeah. it's like, yeah, you got six scholarships. If we were dealing with value, we would be in a great shot, in right? A great <laughs> position. Like, hey, you're getting a four hundred thousand dollars, right? <laughs> Versus and like a local, getting, uh, a local kid in Hawaii. <laughs> exactly. But that's not the case, right? right. right. It's um, it's really it's challenging that way. But um, you know, I think f- for us, we've we've really tried to create because you have 10 starters and you 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 want 10 athletes out there 10 10 volleyball players that can that can go hard um 
but yeah, you can slice it. There's so many different theories of yeah. how you you attack it. Um, it's just it's interesting because say you do go that route, right? Do you tier it? Do you go two freshmen, two sophomores, right. two juniors? Because you don't want to be unloading mm -hmm. a, a, a whole all, once. all six of them. Where right. you're like, oh, there's six. Now let me go get six more freshmen, <laughs> right. and then yeah. you ride them for four. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Right. Um, it's interesting though. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's. Oh, I mean, I'm sure coaches try to hammer it out, but um, and they try to cover up their their shortcomings as, as well. But um, the better, more volleyball players you have that are good that can push the limit um, and make everyone better. Yeah. Uh, in training, I think that's been a really strong formula for us. Yeah. Because um, you did a remarkable job replacing what I think is probably the most talented roster. Yeah, in beach history, and we lost twelve after that second wow. second championship, and <laughs> yeah. it was uh, it was it was a lot. We brought ten in, and it was I always said it was going to be a quick learning curve for yeah. some freshmen, and some of the freshmen just really stepped up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Gabby Walker at the number five spot really uh, was playing well. Um, Madison White would played at the two spot for us, and she was a freshman. Um, she, you know, hit it out of the park. And then we had some transfer students. You uh, killed it in Jenna, the portal. Yeah, Jenna yeah. Johnson and Ashlyn Rasnick Pope. So Jenna Johnson was from Florida State. Ashlyn mm -hmm. Rasnick Pope was from LSU. They came in. I ended up, um, and we we had a lot of thought about this, but Gustavo and I. Ended up putting Jenna and Ashlyn together at the four spot, and um, they hadn't even really played together. Yeah, uh, for, we put them together for the national championships, Jeez. and a lot of people thought we were crazy, but I knew they were both exceptional athletes, really strong, and um, they were fiery. You know, a lot of the the cool thing is the transfer portal and COVID kicked up a, a, an extra year for a lot of players. But the fact that they wanted almost all the transfers that transfer, like they want a different experience. They want a, a shot at a title. Mm -hmm. They want to do something that they haven't done. And this is like their final year yeah. of doing that. Um, and we've created a, you know, a pretty good reputation of, hey, we're going to be in the mix. Um, do you want to come help this program and be a part of that? So to see like Jenna come over and Ashlyn Rasnick Pope and Madison Shields, yeah, all three of them, that was their goal. Like, hey, let's we got one year, we got one crack at this. Let's go to SC and see if we can pull this off. And most people thought there was no way we were going to be in the mix last year, um, but we just put our head down and just kept playing. Yeah. Just just kept playing we the at the end of the regular season um we got a beat up a little bit in the pac 12s um losing to ucla losing to um who was it cal cal had a really great um cal's always that yeah. team they can cal's, beat anyone yeah they're, yeah they're solid team and they they put they put together uh so much their head coach megan and then their assistants um joe mayer and isn't Derek uh, is Derek still there? Dancer. He's at Washington now. Oh, Washington. Yeah, right. he was at Cal. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Dancer Styles, Dan Styles. I don't know okay. if you know that name. Um, but yeah, Derek got the head coaching job at Washington. Washington. Got yeah, you, got so you. he was, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, there okay, for okay. a while. But um, yeah, Cal's really come along, and they they have some great players. But um, it's been a it's been it's been great. This last this next year coming up will be the last year that COVID years. Are ah, that people okay. have they'll be exhausted, right? Right. Because uh, like Megan and when Megan and Delaney came in, that's that's the first year that wasn't affected okay. by COVID, so they won't have. This will be their senior year coming Got it. up, and it's pretty cool for them. They have they have uh, an opportunity There's three for three. Yeah, to, <laughs> to Whoa. four titles. Like that's like crazy stuff. I think I think on the men's side. I think Ricky Ludies, you remember the name Ricky? Well, I know Ludies? the name. Yeah. I think he pulled it off at UCLA once, but like it's it, it to do that is Did Sarah huge. Hughes yeah. come close to that? Sarah but Hughes. But they had the individuals. 
titles yeah, back those then, are, right? Yeah. And what, how did they do? Sarah started basically in twenty. There's a lot. There was Her only like... junior year was twenty sixteen. The first year that the, it was an NCA sport. Right. Oh so, yeah, that was the first year. Wow. Yeah. So I remember in twenty fifteen. That was the first year I joined as an, an assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, the team went twenty eight zero. Won the AVCA national championship. The next year was the first NCA okay, gotcha. championship, which they were dead set on. We got to win this first one. There'll <laughs> yeah. never be another first. Right, yeah. And her and uh, Kelly Chang, just so focused, uh, ended up winning that and then came and won back to back, winning in 2017. I think that's when they finished up. Gotcha. So three titles. She didn't have the opportunity to win all NCA titles. Right, right, right. Um, because the sport's so young. Yeah, exactly. But um, and you're right; they used to have the individual, or not the individual. I should call it the pairs championship. Right, right. Um, but the NCA always wanted one championship, and at first I thought it was kind of a bummer. I thought they should have the pairs as well. But as time has gone by, I've seen the value of having just the team. Yeah. Because if you separate it, then all these colleges start to change their agendas. Right. Like my agenda now is to get one great team. Right, yeah. To send that one great team, you know. And we'll just claim that national championship. Yeah, and like yeah. forget about right. the whole concept. So with the team concept, I think it, it forces more inclusion and more right. players. Every team, you know, you got to mm-hmm. have probably 18 to 20 people on the roster. Um, and I just like I like it. Yeah. That's a, my personal opinion. And um, I hope they stick with it. I know there'll always be organizations trying to create a pairs, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's it's crazy. And, and the ratings were up like two hundred percent. Saw that. I mean, ah. the ratings were through the roof. Yeah, it's it so was good to hear. it was insane. And ESPN, I got to work on that show as a broadcaster in twenty nineteen, the national championship. Oh, awesome. and I was so impressed with. I mean, they pulled out all the stops, you know, they really are vested in it, which is so cool. I don't know if you guys remember, but TNT did the first couple of years. Did they? And yeah, and then ESPN, I always thought ESPN got did the it. rights to it. The, the cool thing about TNT is we were getting a lot of publicity during basketball. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Playoffs. Right? <laughs> yeah. But no, but, I mean, you can slice things a hundred ways nothing's better than being on ESPN. Yeah. Mm. Like, and the way they tiered it, basically the, the, the first few rounds were on ESPN, um, ESPN U, mm-hmm. and then it jumped to ESPN two. And then the finals were on big ESPN Sick. and it just, it got so many new viewers and it was, it was just really, it's cool to see it, it jumping up like that. And hopefully we can continue on the momentum and then uh, roll into the Olympics next year. Um, but I would love to see the sport, you know, capitalize the fire that it has at, at the pro level, which mm. you're living it right now. And what you said about like Mel and uh, Brandy, it's, you know, it's, it's not helping, right? If I'm, if I'm in the eighth grade or seventh grade, I remember I used to, this is before your time, but we used to have volleyball magazine that would come out. And yeah. that was your, way to get right. news and stuff mm-hmm. you couldn't just instantly get it off instagram right. and follow people but in the back i remember vividly in the back of that magazine they would put like the top 30 money winners yeah every every month and then the final at you know at the end when the summer was over in september or august and i remember looking at it and you know some years like car should be at like i think his record was like 450 thousand and, <laughs> and then, that's back then yeah and you so go like you go like the top 15 now. you go the top 15 if top 15 making six figures yeah and you're not like, even including domestic, sponsors domestically exactly. Yeah. exactly not even including sponsors and so as a kid that was important you know like you don't know really the concept of money but at the same time you're like oh i could do that and actually make a living yeah and make a career out mm-hmm. of it and i think it hurts when you you, you say, yeah. you know, like, hey, they're going and doing this and winning and coming up short in this day and age. It's it, it hurts and it shouldn't yeah. be. And yeah, we, we got to change that. And granted, like there are sponsor money, like they're they're making a living, but that specific right. team. But yeah, 
it's like, do you want to bring awareness to it so it changes? Yeah. Do and the people that you're bringing awareness to care <laughs> enough? Or are you just making the sport look bad by publicizing that? So I just hope the platform, I mean, right now, I think you guys being in it right now are, you you have a platform, mm. a, somewhat of a, you know, a yeah. platform to start with, and it's almost on you now to create the value. Yeah, and, and build your brand yes. based on that platform. And it is a lot easier these days with social media, like right. all the the, right. the tools are there. Granted, you kind of have to have that personality for it. Right. But that's how I see it now. Like when right. I see this, the, I, I really genuinely have stopped complaining just like to right. myself and right. to other people <laughs> right. about, oh, the prize money and this. I'm like, man, I'm done with worrying, right. like hoping other people create a business plan and something that makes mm. me wealthier. You know, it's like we do have a platform. Like if they, I make a fine, a good living, a great living for what I, for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's cause I'm capitalizing on the right, platform that they're giving me. And, and the, the platform is, if I, if that's taken yeah. away from me, right. everything I've created for myself is taken away as well. Right. So like, there's a lot of value there mm -hmm. that we're not, that I'm not like explaining while I say that the prize money's down, you right. know? There is value, but it would be nice when you, you, you know. You, also, we let's all... just focus on being a professional athlete, right? <laughs> right. Like NBA guys aren't like really yeah. worried about their brand. And if they are, then they have like a little team of people worrying about it. Right. And doing yeah. it, building it for them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and we all know how much, how much sponsor money is out there. Yes. And so, you know, we just got to get more in the professional beach game and the demographic is amazing the biggest shortcoming of our sport is this we don't have any equipment yes there's no it's industry there's nothing to sell uh. so like the other day saturday i went to the u.s open volleyballs uh, <clears throat> at, uh, that's it <laughs> yeah but that's it yeah. glasses and volleyballs and some shorts right? oh and um by the way the hardest sponsor i've ever tried to get over the years oakley. sunglasses <laughs> anyone yeah. oakley's the yeah. richest and the cheapest yeah in terms of like how much money they want to give out. Well, Oakley, oh, Oakley, because I was an Oakley athlete. Right. They're competing with themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Like they can give everyone can glasses give, and people will just wear them. Right. Because <laughs> the qual the product is so good. It is. And there's no one out there, and it's a weird it's a weird deal. But what I was totally. gonna say was um, Saturday I went to the U.S. Open uh, that was at LACC, yeah. and oh my gosh, the build out of that tournament like i can't i was astonished like from tee box to green double decker vip the entire 18th hole yep mm. i was on uh, the 12th hole in this suite that had two double deckers of probably 10 suites on each no way i mean you're watching tv you look over thing and rory's putting and like and then merchandise. They had tents the size of gyms. Hmm. And Kent, Two Kent of them. went. Did you run into Kent? No, I haven't seen so Kent in a while. He sent me a video, like, sold out. The merch was, like, it was empty in, it by was Sunday. Insane. It was <laughs> insane. I was like, this is a build-out. Like, but, you know, golf has a different model. I, most, uh, of course, the U.S. Open is a whole other level, right? right? But even, like, Riviera, mm -hmm. there's an organization that works on that tournament all year it's it's not hmm. a traveling kind of deal it, right it's that local promotion mm. um and you know i think we need to you know look at the golfs and the tennises and 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 see what can happen but the demographic the athleticism the sex appeal the competitiveness it's all there. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just needs to be packaged. So it's and almost, uh, you could argue it's as, as good as ever. Yeah. And Certainly the talent is. Yeah. It's just, and I don't have the answer. Yeah. But there's a lot of really good ingredients. Totally. And, um, you know, I hope, I hope it keeps, I hope it gets back on the trajectory yeah. that it needs to I think, to be. Uh, well, we're talking about the college numbers doing so well on ESPN. And I think that the college format is so good for a television product because if there's a bad match on court three, right. you don't have you don't have to put it on. You have the scoreboard ticker up there. It's like right. 
you know, the Norses are up 18 to 10. All right, yeah. we don't need to see that match. We can just go to this one on uh, one that's tight. Yeah. Go to the Norses for match point. Great job. It's celebrate like getting and NFL Red Zone on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. It, techni- a, it technically it's exactly is, what it is. Because I remember so. I, I broadcast, gosh, one of the last tournaments. And where was it? Not New Orleans. An AVP? Huntington? Yeah. I think Huntington, it was Huntington. Huntington lost AVP? Yeah. Huntington, yeah. And I don't know. I think one of the finals was really kind of mediocre. And, I was in one of them. So. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I was trash talking and jump setting, so it might not have been mine. My, I did my three. best. Yeah, the women's, <laughs> the first, the women's was weird. Yeah. Because Kelly and Sarah kind of handled Betsy and Julia in the first set, but then it went, I don't know if you knew this, if you were broadcasting, uh-huh. but it went off air. For uh, the whole second set until the last like two points. No, I didn't. Yeah. yeah so uh, I have no idea what happened. One. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So was, actually, our final wasn't amazing. Because it was like. But I remember. Oh, no, we made a comeback in the first. I don't know. They start to blend. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, You've only called 9,000 matches. No, but it was. Uh, to, to your point, it's like if a, if a match is a little can be a little stale it's nice to have that ability to jump around so right. i think there's a you know some sort of happy medium i love watching bracket play um i would like it to be single limb i think then you guys would have less matches more of those matches would be featured and and, and you'd get better quality you wouldn't see yeah. exhausted athletes right like right. if a team had gone through the losers and like really been grinding like their their legs aren't there Right, quite as much as they yeah. could be, and that's yeah. not as good of a product, right? Which is, man, those Australians. I couldn't believe they still had wild. the legs in them. I know. I don't know if you kept up with the challenge in Latvia. I didn't. But I these, didn't, so these not that two long. Aussies, Thomas Hodges and Zach Schubert, they're yeah. they're very good. They made a final in Elite Sixteen last year, but their points had washed out, so they're back in challenge qualifiers. Right. So they win two matches in the qualifier, and they go out. They win both matches of pool play. One of them went to three. And then and thirty all, six thirty eight one of them yeah and so I was playing next what? and I'm like yeah. can you guys so their end? first set against Ukraine was either thirty six thirty eight or thirty four thirty six yeah something uh, like that and that was their first round went to three in their second round three in the semis three in the finals wow and they won eight straight and I, and I was and commentating the, the finals yeah. wow. so they lose the first set twenty one ten to George mm-hmm. and Andre I'm like okay. they're they're done their legs have fallen off they win the second and I was like. There's no chance they win three. They got nothing left because wow. they play a taxing style. Yeah. They just beat everything. Yeah. Big jump serve, big swing every <clears> time. Jump high, hit hard. <laughs> and they won. I couldn't believe it. It was like, fun to uh, watch. What's his name? Brower. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I was just <laughs> asked, like, I'm like, do you ever shoot? And he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, you shoot a few times. I mean, everyone's on their heels because you're yeah, exactly. you know, making blast it. Yeah. Just to save That's, your shoulder. Yeah, and it seems he's still going, right? Mm-hmm. He's still his, his same partner. Same partner. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's you know those guys met. They were both like injured. One had like a knee injury. One like a shoulder or something. And they're like, "Hey, let's give it a shot," you know. And then they and won that a world was back in like 2010 or something. And then they won a world title yeah. like a year or two later. Yeah, and so cool. Been together for like 15 years or yeah. something. Yeah, that's wild. 13 years. Is Gavira still out there? Uh, yeah, he him is. and Herrera. They're playing awesome, too. That's I haven't amazing. seen him in a while. I don't That's know what I mean, hurt. Herrera. Herrera, I'm not kidding you. Four Olympics, right? I played in the Olympics with Herrera. Yeah, I think five. In 04. Oh, five. Five Olympics. In 04, I remember he got <laughs> four silver. Silver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I freak out when I hear And that's with the COVID year. <laughs> no, but I... Like, Tokyo got pushed even further <laughs> and he played in it. And now he's probably it's on yeah, track. Like, yeah. Holy I crap. I think about that and I'm like, oh my God, there's no way I could still be <laughs> yeah. doing that. Like, and how And cool. he hits like OT. If it's a tight <laughs> oh ball, my he just swings so high <laughs> yeah. still. Makes it look so easy. Yeah, crazy. Well, I, I, that's amazing. Herrera's been playing for... They won an event this year. They won the pass. They won a challenger. Nice, nice. Because they're always like, they're always in the mix. Just two like like, solid, extremely solid volleyball players. One of the best side out teams out there still. That's so awesome. They don't, they don't make many defensive plays, but they don't need to. Like every time you watch one of their matches, it's like an eighty-five percent side out rate. It's like yeah. who's going to get two aces and a block? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that wins the set. Mm. So good. <laughs> yeah. So good. With uh, I'm curious with just coaching alone with the college format versus like 
Is your do you think the approach of coaching a doubles a doubles team versus you know a whole college team as one like trying to win like that? Yeah, is a completely different coaching strategy because I I think about it like I'm basically in some ways mm -hmm. trying to coach my team right. I'm like a leader of my team trying mm -hmm. to make sure the roles are right and we're all communicating the right way. But it's so different with two yeah. guys on the court and then you have but you have those two individuals out there. But then like multiples of it so i'm just curious yeah. like if it's, it's interesting it's like you can get more in depth when you just have a pair and really particular yeah um which is interesting too because like you, you've coached probably and been coached and when it's so everything's about you and your partner like sometimes it, it's like it takes that coach that understands like when to really yeah. back off because mm -hmm. there's so much time like together totally whereas with a roster of 20 it's easier to navigate in terms of your coaching staff and it's cool will we'll, um, the ncaa opened up that second assistant role, uh job now oh, so really? the volunteer will disappear oh i didn't know and that and but it's up to, to pay the assistant job. Yeah, it's up to the university, uh, but our university will for sure right. yeah. be in it. Uh, we try to, you know, and I think I have a responsibility as, you know, I think we have the top school in the country, so we got to be a leader in pushing. I think a lot of schools will look like, hey, USC's not doing it, so right, right. why would we? But mm -hmm. when we are, I think it, it elevates everything. Um, but having two coaches having two coaches that are not exactly me yeah. you know you don't want three of, of the same person right. yeah and then it's kind of cool because the players can resonate maybe with right you know if if i'm the head coach and you two guys are assistant like maybe they want to be yeah you know getting more feedback from you yeah, like this and, girl like really yeah. like listens and hears yeah, what this coach is saying. Exactly. I'm just going to let them yeah. connect kind of thing. Exactly. And then it takes a head coach open to, okay, I see that. Right. I don't need to to be the guy. Mm -hmm. That's why you hire right. the right people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I guess there's more. My question, my answer to that is there's more ways to buffer Rather yeah. than it's just like, yeah. hey, I'm the coach, you guys are playing. I'm the coach, you guys are playing. It's more fluid to where sometimes I leave you guys and you know now Gustavo can work with you. Right. And then I'm back, you know. Yeah. And, and having five or six teams, I like each coach to have maybe a couple teams that they'll be working with. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. So you find the, like the coaches that gel with certain teams and. Yeah, because you don't want to be like, everyone's different, right? Yeah. Like, the ones have to play the ones. The fives have to play the fives. The coaching is going to be pretty different. Uh, of course, we're trying to accomplish the same things in terms of volleyball styles mm -hmm. and, and play and effectiveness. But you're going to be playing against different people. So you're looking at a different film than you're looking at. And if I can, if you have two teams, you have two teams, I have two teams, that's six teams. Mm -hmm. And I can really get in to those two teams. Right. If the coach is the right match. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There's sometimes where players don't vibe with coaches. But, right. you know, maybe the other four teams are already with coaches. And it's like it gets a little dicey. Mm -hmm, totally. Um, but I think managing personalities is a big thing. Uh, we've had a lot of great players. And I see the head coach's job as not only the nitty gritty volleyball stuff, which I love, but more importantly, making sure personalities are okay. Um, and the way I do that is I try to treat everybody the same. Mm. So many people think like, oh, if I come on as a walk on, I'm not going to be treated like a scholarship. Like if, once you get in the door, I don't care if yeah, you're yeah. on a 2% scholarship mm -hmm. or a uh, 90%, you know, whatever it is, you're on the squad and let's play. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to other, other coaches are like, I would never play a freshman at whatever position, you know, halfway into the season of that uh, 21 season, 
I put Megan Craft with Tina at the one, and everyone was like, oh, the two blockers. They can't, right. they can't play together. <laughs> like, they never lost. <laughs> and But Megan was a freshman. Yeah. You know, but I... <clears throat> The way she'd played, I'd known her. She'd been coming to our camps uh, for some time, and you just knew that she could handle it. Yeah. And um, and she'd taken a fifth in an AVP. Right, right, right. That didn't <laughs> she hurt. She can play ball. Right. Yeah. They can play. And they won a state championship in uh, in high school, her yeah. and Delaney. And you know how it is. It's like winning's contagious. Like yeah. You don't just win usually here and there. It's like it's it's just... Some people are winners and some people aren't and some people are on their way to getting there. But I don't like to look at like you're a freshman, you're a senior, you're right. a scholarship athlete. You're not like you're just a player. Mm -hmm. And I, I always tell the, the, the team, like, you guys pick the hmm. roster, not me. Like, right. I mean, like, honestly, could I have ever put like Tina Gradina at a number two spot? <laughs> I couldn't. Right. Right? Like, you'd be thrown in jail. Right? right. Like, <laughs> but I didn't create that. Right. You right. know, she did. Yeah. She And I tell players, like, you got to make the decision really easy for me. Yeah. To where I look like a fool if right. I'm making a, a decision opposite of, like, you know. Yeah. And I think when you put that in their hands and you empower them with that freedom, like... I'm driving this bus, right. you know, and then, but you only do that by creating the relationships, creating, um, trust and off the court to where when you're, when you're in the heat of it and you're giving instruction, they're going to listen mm -hmm. and they're going to realize like, Hey, like they're not going to question motives. Yeah. You know, it's, Hey, we're here for one thing. Yeah. And, that was the coolest thing about the national championship this year was um, in that semi, we played TCU and Megan Delaney lost at the one to Daniela, the, the Spaniard, the, the girl uh -huh. from Spain, which is a solid player. And um, the whole year, Megan and Delaney had lost once. That was it going into that. And so... Olivia Bacos and Gabby Walker. Bacos is uh, was a junior this year, and and Walker was a freshman. It came down to the five court, yeah. and they had to step it up. That was the semis. Then you get to the finals, and we won the first two, which I think really freed up. I think UCLA was like you backed them in a little corner. They just come out swinging because right. you had nothing left, and. They uh, the ones ended up winning, and then it our twos and our fours ended up winning. That's how we got up two to zero in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but then it came down to the third three spot with the twins. And my point is with all this is everyone was able to focus on their match. It's easy in, when you have five teams to be like, oh, so-and-so is going to take care of it. Yeah. But right. as soon as you do that is when you get caught. Hmm. Especially if they don't take care of it and you're like, well, now, oh, yeah, yeah cause <laughs> now you're like, well, what do you mean? Everybody's here <laughs> yeah. on my court and you're just freaked out. Right. So I think it's you're, you're technically teaching the same volleyball stuff yeah you're just dealing with a lot more individuals right and so you're having to manage that but it's pretty cool having all those individuals because now you have this practice environment with all these great players rather yeah. than you know you're if i'm just coaching a pair you're probably calling another pair to yeah on the beach and train mm -hmm. and for sure yeah, and, yeah whereas this is like Boom, you know, you're playing Tina, and then like the next rally, Julia's out on the court, and then the next rally, it's Haley Harward, and then it's Megan Craft. Right. And, you know, and it just keeps on coming, <laughs> yeah. and you just elevate. And we've tried to use that talent to, to push the level. So then when it's game time, it's, it's like they've been battle tested. Yeah, you're, uh, huh. the player development at USC is significant. Yeah, that's... just because well when you had you had a pretty young team this year mm -hmm. but you've had one of the biggest benefits of having such a deep roster is that even the girls who aren't playing are getting so much better in practice because they're 
siding out against Atina Block. They're passing right. a Julius Skull serve. They're digging Haley Harward's bombs. Yeah. And then they get in the court, and they're like, oh, this is a little bit easier than yeah. trying to play Tina. <laughs> it's it's true. It, it is true. Um, and it's that's another thing is you want to develop the the 15 through 25 yeah. player on your roster or 15 through 20. Um, but it is hard with just three coaches. Yeah. So you do a lot of development during the fall and then in the spring as the season goes on, you, you kind of really need to hone in mm. on that focus of who's going to be on the, on the court. Um, it would be cool to have like even a, like one more court, one more coach. Yeah. Um, but it's so new. I mean, we're not even 10 years. So is there, now yeah. that there's a paid assistant, a second paid assistant, mm-hmm. can you also have a volunteer? Or is no, that no. so now the, there are no volunteers? No more volunteers. Or if you well, if you don't take that paid assistant, I think you, you can have you the, can have a volunteer. I think you can have the volunteer if you decide not to have got it the the paid assistant. So I think schools can stay stay okay. where they are, but you can't have a staff of four. Correct. Okay. Correct. I thought at first we were getting an extra <laughs> as well, and um, which would have been awesome for the the student athlete, right? Cause they yeah. benefit the most cause now they're getting even more instruction. Right. Mm-hmm. But, um, it's, it's, um, it's evolving. It's young. And, um, you know, the one thing I wanted to make sure we talk about, and, and I don't know if you guys are really aware of it, but, <clears throat> and I'll try to make this, this clear, right. How it works. <laughs> yeah. But do you know the difference between headcount sports and equivalency sports? No. Uh, no. It's okay if you don't. Yeah. I, I had no clue yeah. before coaching at college. Headcount sports are sports like football's headcount, basketball's headcount, both uh, male and female. Um, let's see. Uh, indoor women's volleyball headcount. What that means is there's a number that's been determined for football. It's 85. They get Mm -hmm. 85 scholarships. You can't divvy them. You can't divvy them up. It's 85. Right. You can't split them in half. Women's indoor has, um, I want to say, 12. Uh, Women's basketball, 15. Men's basketball, 15. Okay. So those are head count. Equivalency sports are sports that are... I guess you'd call them underfunded, right? Men's volleyball still has four and a half scholarships like when you played. Right. Right? Like when I played. Yeah. <laughs> and there's six starters. Beach, right now, we have how many starters? Ten. With six. So with six, is six, every player six. on a football team on a full ride? 85? Oh, yeah. You have D1. to. Yeah. Every single D1 football player is on a full ride? Right. Either and that or nothing. Yeah, or, or nothing. That's insane. Yeah. And that's if you're if you're number eighty six, you wouldn't be. How many guys are on a football roster? About eighty. A lot. I, I'm sure <laughs> that's most. A big number. But Sorry, I bet I, I <laughs> would even spare five, four of those, <laughs> or uh, uh, one and a half of those to get a men's volleyball a full yeah. starting roster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, football they fund the rest of the athletic oh, programs. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. What drives right. the NCAA? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> baseball equivalency. Um, okay. So track and field equivalency um so they're very different yeah so right now we're limited we're such a new sport my crusade which if this happens will i believe change the landscape of the sport if beach gets designated from the ncaa as a headcount sport and they were to increase that number to 12, right? Which would make sense. Yeah. 10 starters, uh, 12 or more, right? 12 would be fantastic. Imagine how this changes the landscape. Every big school that's all in is going to have 12 rides, right? So right now what's happening is if I'm in junior high, and I look at, and I'm playing beach, and you guys know a lot of people are doing this, right? They're playing indoor on their club. They're playing mm-hmm, beach. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and remember, I told you when I was a kid, looking at the volleyball magazine, and I'm like, okay, there's a path. Yeah. There's a pathway. So if you're looking at college, that's your big thing. And 
expenses and your socioeconomic situation is a question mark, which way are you going to go? Are you going to go indoor where there's 300 plus D1 schools that probably have 12 rides? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to play on the beach where there's six scholarships at most? And you'll be on like a 40 percenter. It might be on a 40 percenter or lower. So imagine if beach changed to a headcount sport, had 12 rides. You didn't have to make that decision. Imagine how many spectacular athletes play mm. club that play indoor that never go the beach route because of that mm -hmm. issue and so think of it from like a socioeconomic standpoint and think of how much more diverse the sport would become because you'd have the best athletes in the sport right. playing beach where a lot of top athletes now never never even dabble in it so that's basically a stroke of a pen by the NCAA limp lifting. I mean, we don't even have to come. It would be nice to be designated headcount, but if they just lifted the scholarship limit from six to eight would work, to 10 would work, to 12 yeah. mm -hmm. would work, then you're going to have young kids thinking, I can get a, I can get a full scholarship. Because right. I know it was important for me to get a full scholarship um, it didn't matter how I was coming in. Like I think at the end of the day, when I was at Pepperdine, they worked with like Cal Grants and this, and mm -hmm. you know, since I have a diverse background, I was available to get and whatever else I could get from any aid. The actual athletic number could go to a teammate. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All oh, right, right. Yeah. But it was important that I get covered because I just we weren't in a position to to pay for it. my family wasn't in a position mm -hmm. to pay for Pepperdine. Yeah, right. You know, and so, so wait, did you accept scholarship then, or no? You just yeah, yeah. But you it could was, get both. It was kind of piecemeal. You can get around. both, right? Yeah, because with financial aid, changed. financial aid, you can't accept scholarship and financial aid. Is At that still some a thing? schools, yeah. I think that's a. It's more of a conference thing. I think that was the case with me. I couldn't get any scholarship. Yeah, it's it's the way it is in the yeah, Pac-12. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, and what he's referring to is like you you can only get one or the other yeah yeah exactly right? okay like if he has a need they base, couldn't offer me as much as i could get for financial aid basically is what happened right so if he has a need base of fifty thousand, then he 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 puts in the application and it kicks out and the the financial aid package could be 50. yeah um i as a coach can't fill up the 50. Okay. With athletic. Yeah. On top of that. Okay. He's got to take one or the other. Got it. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense to take the athletic aid because then he's taking money that could actually go in the program. So right. he would take the financial aid. The coach I'd, scores actually. Then yeah, then you, then yeah, you're in a better position now. I can go offer you something. Right. To get you in. Yeah. So it's a weird game, financial game behind the scenes, but it's a game that none of the headcount sports play. Right. Right. Because they're already taken care of. Yeah. And huh. I just, my dream is to get Beach at the collegiate level providing those types of scholarship numbers. And then that's basically taking the lid off of the whole thing. And that's the only thing holding it back right now. Yeah. I, I think. And uh, you'll see. You just you need that path. I keep referring to that mm -hmm. that vision of like, oh, I see myself. I can go that right. Way. 100%. I, I can do yep. that. Yeah, I can do that. What's the what's the benefit of an equivalency sport system? <laughs> do you know? It's a great question because I, you know because I it's so easy to understand. Yeah, you know, it's like single elimination versus modified pool play, where right. single limb with the with the full scholarships head count that yeah. is easy to make sense of. Whereas, because you were talking about the value of a USC scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, a 50% is a lot higher. But you and school, schools like USC, Pepperdine, mm -hmm. Stanford, recruiting-wise, you have an uphill battle because even on a 50% scholarship, they still have to pay like 50 grand a year. <laughs> oh, now you're starting to get it. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, but like if you get a 50% scholarship at a Florida State, right. 
and you're in state, you're paying like eight. And so it's a, the recruiting battlegrounds aren't even in an equivalency sport. And obviously, someone else say that. and obviously you're doing just fine. No, but. no, no. Like, I, that's what I preach. It's, it, it's not, a, it's not an even playing field. It's not even close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not even close. Right. And so, and especially since you're private, I mean, even UCLA being a state school has a, a much easier time of it. I think because just as the price tag is lower. Totally. Because it, like that was a big struggle when Delaney was at Pepperdine. She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're an $80,000 a year school, so we mm-hmm. offer you a $50,000 scholarship mm-hmm. or a 50 percenter. Right. You're still paying a huge out-of-pocket yeah, exactly. expense versus if you go to, you know, if you're in Texas and you go to TCU, it might be a different case. No, yeah. TCU is right up there with Are Pepperdine. They? Yeah. I was okay. on like that example. But yeah, but I, know yeah. What you're, I know what you're saying, but uh, you're absolutely right. It's... Uh, you nailed it. So I'm glad I explained it <laughs> yeah. because you nailed it. It's um, and if if you got to that headcount, it would t- it would make it it's even it, exactly yeah exactly. Hmm. So a lot of uh, what you do as a a beach coach is is like GM stuff, right? Right. Where you're, you know, <laughs> it's really, really, it's like a salary cap. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I was on the phone my entire drive dealing with. I bet percentages and wow, yeah, that's and it's a crazy it's, chess match because you're like, well, I really like this recruit and this recruit, but I only have yeah. one and a half left, and I got yeah. seventy five. But is that enough to seal yeah. her? Like, right? I, I love it. I love the financial aid. Kind of, like, yeah. how's her family the going? Concept. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, so I, I'm a yeah. I'm a fan of the headcount. I'm trying to. It think would of, be nice if they switched every sport yeah. over to it, and it it just would make sense. Yeah. It's like, but I get it. Like. Well, it's not even revenue generated. It's not just based on that. It's just, it's it's almost like they're in that position now, and it's like, like we said earlier, that's how we've always done it. Right. And it's like, because yeah. no one has a good answer. No one <laughs> right, really right, has right. a good answer <laughs> right. other than it's just the way we've done it. This seems right. It seems like our whole sport at the professional level. <laughs> so, like... so I think we have a really great chance to be the exception and that bucks the rule because women's beach volleyball is the fastest emerging yeah, right. NCAA sport mm-hmm. of all time. It's not even a decade old and the numbers are off the chart. Female and, volleyball. Yeah. In our country. Yeah. Women's sports right now are, are thriving and on such an upswing. And I think it's a great time to strike to, to make this, this happen because it's just going to provide more opportunity um and it's just there's no good rebuttal and it's a it's a really great time where the nc2a is starting to take their hands off of a lot of stuff right and whether that's good or bad you know what i mean yeah. things are getting really different let's yeah. just say yeah um and with the uh the name image and likeness the nil stuff it's the whole the whole kind of platform of sport college sports is is changing mm-hmm. yeah and because there's just there's so much money in football and basketball but the f- football is it's insane it's cartoon money yeah it's just and everyone wants a piece every network wants a piece mm-hmm. and it's pretty cool and i think we all know that football drives the bus with with athletics when football's doing well other sports are doing well Mm -hmm. out of school um but at the same time we got to be careful do we want it to just be about football right that's the question like you got to sit back and say all right what are we trying to accomplish as a a college sports and it's pretty cool when you have the beach volleyballs, the indoor volleyballs, the rowing, the soccer, mm-hmm. the lacrosse, the, you know, you name it, all these sports. Um, imagine if it's just, if it just comes down to just football, you know? Right. As great as football is, it's pretty cool that so many athletes can compete at a collegiate level right. in so many different sports mm-hmm. even though we know and everyone knows it's driven by the revenue sports but i hope it never goes away you know i hope that 
you know, kids can aspire to play lacrosse and play soccer right. and play volleyball and play, you know, do track and field. And that those are still offerings at schools where a lot of stuff is in flux right now. Yeah, totally. It's really... Uh, I've read a lot of interesting... There's so much interesting stuff on NIL uh -huh. because it's so new. And one of the pieces that I read was that NIL is actually a good way to start breaking away from being so reliant on football mm -hmm. because now you can have... Mm -hmm. I'll use the Cavender twins at Miami, mm -hmm. two women's mm -hmm. basketball players. They're mm -hmm. making two million a year in their final year at Miami. Well, you don't need to use scholarships on the Cavender twins when they're pulling they're in twins, two million right? a year. Yeah, yeah that's Cavender. Okay. I, they so were then, the first to sign NIL deals. Yeah, and they right? were the like, big ones. Like the day one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah Miami, that. they're on top of the NIL yeah. game, whether, you know, for better or for worse. Yeah. But <laughs> it's it's just an interesting marketplace. You see, like this LSU gymnast, she signed a big deal, but that then opens up. Now we don't, the LSU or the Miami basketball program isn't mm -hmm. so reliant. Well, the football team is doing bad. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? We have these girls coming in with NIL money. We're okay. Right. Like we can separate ourselves. It's a little bit more nice. democratic, yeah. I guess you could say. But it's the wild, wild west. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. It's another way that you can, you know, it's a, it's a door. It's another option, right? Like that didn't exist to get funding to an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in, in our sport, as it, it, it constantly is changing, like day by day, the rules and how you can do it, it would be awesome to fill that gap from the headcount. Like, you right. know, if the NCAA is not going to give the scholarship limit to there, then teams are going to start trying to get there through NIL. Like yeah. you said, like if you can get an extra athlete through NIL, mm -hmm. that's, that's massive. Mm -hmm. Whereas football and basketball it's more like what can you do for me right because <laughs> right. you're already covered and then you have the portal as well right that kind of mm -hmm. just gives the portals these, people are like yeah we have this the portal is a perfect name for it yeah like, or i can step through the <laughs> yeah. portal and transport to yeah. something where i make more money potentially yeah. right yeah i like the portal but it also has its drawbacks right, right. i it, could see that a lot of kids aren't sticking it out Right. right any longer hey i just just leave it's how like many kids agency. in college were just like pissed at like for half the year like yeah. i mean you have like seasonal depression like at some points right like <laughs> right. you just have bad stretches but now they they now they're, they're gone yeah yeah oh, i'm gonna go over there and then i've heard stories where you, you know you leave one program because you're not playing you go to the next you think it's great and it's worse yeah and then they're trying to transfer again so it's a cool avenue for the student yeah. athlete but at the same time that kind of stick stick to itiveness is mm. is disappearing yeah, yeah. just like oh screw this place. I'm going over <laughs> yeah. here, and then i'm going over here and they, it's nice having that one time transfer exemption but if you need to transfer more than once you can find a way yeah uh, yeah and make it happen but um beach at least seems to be mostly fifth years just doing it. Beach seems to be mostly well, the fifth right, but that it's gonna it'll disappear after this year. Right. Okay. Because the this COVID. last group, this is the last group who has a okay. COVID mm -hmm. year. So I thought it was important for us to really look into this last year of transfers who wanted to um, do you know have a different experience that senior year, like the the players we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. Um, but I think it'll really calm down. Yeah. After this year, it'll be there won't be out there yeah. as much. And you've had a pretty good retention rate at SC. I can't think yeah. of many people who've transferred transferred out from No. You. We've we've had a couple, but um Have you seen the facilities? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have. They're yeah, go on a go on a recruiting trip before you transfer. Yeah. Go check it out over, yeah. over wherever you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, we've had we've had a few I've you're right. When when they come, it's it's rare that anyone's leaving, um, unless it's just not a good fit or they're way, way behind the eight ball mm -hmm. and they're down the line. And right. It's uh we try to really open up recruits eyes like, Hey, you're coming to play with elite athletes. Mm -hmm. And if you have a problem looking left and right and seeing talent, right, right, right. then you're probably in the wrong place. Right. Yeah. Go somewhere that, um, that's great. I remember <laughs> this quick recruiting story. 
I was uh, recruiting this girl. I thought she was like a 30, 30, 40% type. Yeah. Um, good player. But I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And finally, I was talking to her mom. And she said, uh, well, it's it's really important that so-and-so is number one in her recruiting class. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, uh, okay, well... Let's talk later. You know, that's, like, that's the last call. Like, who wants, like, for what? You want a trophy? The label? Yeah, right. right? Yeah. And who wants to be the best in their class? That means that you're, you're not right. you know, pushing thriving either. for someone. Like, the best line I ever heard was, like, if you're the best person on the court in practice, like, you need to go Get find another court. court. Like, yeah. You know, you want to play up, play up, play up. Never and, want the nicest house in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I don't know if I ever told you guys this story, but in uh, late 90s or mid 90s, get, just got out of college, I was playing with Canyon Seaman. Mm -hmm. Did you ever remember yeah. Canyon? Yeah, you and Canyon had some good tournaments. Yeah, You're sure. fun to watch. So we we go down the beach one day. State Beach was a big beach back then. The All the North Bay guys, the, you know, St. Jim, yep. Kent, and the whole deal. I'm sure yeah. you've got a billion stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're down at the beach. Karch and Ken are the team, right? They're on the streak as, as they always were dominant. And they practice up there once a week. And then I think Kent went down to St. Clemente to, to practice with Karch on, uh, once a week. And so we were practicing at State one day. They were up there. Whoever they were supposed to play, like, didn't show. And so they asked, they said, hey, will you guys play? And, you know, we were like, you're like, what the hell? Is it for real? Because you got to understand, like, it's it's Karch. It's close to, like, the 84 and 88, you oh, know, yeah. happen. This is prior to, um, this is, I think, just, no, no, no. They just won, I think, the gold, the 96. And okay. it was... Um, they were practicing. They filled. We filled in. We played. You know, we scored like eleven out of fifteen. You know, we're playing at fifteen, so it was respectable. Yeah, you'll take that. And so they said, uh, "Yeah, we play up here once a week. You guys want to play?" And we were so stoked. You know, like, <laughs> like yeah. to. We were practice dummies for them, but we're for us like playing the championship game for every sure. Yeah. Wednesday or whatever yeah. it was. So we played. This was. Um, this was. No, you know what it was? It was the preseason going into the 96 okay. uh, season, the 96 year, which was Atlanta. Uh. And we uh, played them every week, every week. And finally, the season starts, right? And so we're in Fort Myers, and uh, Ken is just bombing serves, and we're going through people, and all of a sudden, we make it to the final, right? Yeah. And freaking wouldn't you know it, there was playing against Karch and Ken. <laughs> and we're bombing serves. Like, you you know, like, yeah. they had to be going like these freaking kids. Yeah. Like, they don't even know what they're doing. You know, <laughs> just, we get up 13 to... Seven, 13 I to... I think it was 13-8. Something like that. Yeah. Like, acing them off the court. It was, like, crazy. Yeah. They go on to side out <laughs> somewhere between 27 and 30 consecutive times. Oh, my God. And beat us 16-14. No way. And we were still stoked, right? Like, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the next week, we're, you know, waiting for the call, like, to practice. And, like, Monday comes, no call. Tuesday, <laughs> like, no call. Yep. And that was the last yep. time we ever played. <laughs> so I always tell people that, like, the only way we got up to that level was playing these guys that mm -hmm. were just dominant and yeah. just studs. And and it was cool. Like, Karch kind of created that training mentality. Like, now you go down the beach with, you know, 20, 30 balls each. Yeah. And you would just wrap. You would wrap. Mm -hmm. Like, there would be yeah. over 100 balls down there. Yeah. And, Rather than just pick up game kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And what they loved to do was side out. They would Everyone would serve 30. 30 balls so i would serve 30 you would serve 30 you mm. and then the fourth and the the sweet spot they would always go for was 24 i think it was which is about 80 80 percent pretty good it's pretty good yeah. 24 and so you could do it anyways like we could split our 30 yeah. you know and just like an alternator guy like, do 15 you could do 15, whatever yeah. you wanted to slice it but that was the main drill and 
it was just a side out mentality because at the end of the day and i even preach it now like you side out you can play with anybody mm-hmm. it's about to fall track oh if you uh <laughs> if you if you giving up points you're in for a long haul and your mentality oh, changes right 100 percent. when you're playing and you're like i just gave up we've given up three now i gotta make up three you're like i just got three blocks and it's tied yeah <laughs> and you're just like what do i gotta do right it's a totally different mentality but if it, if your side out game's strong it's and it's hard to tell how good player side out game is now because mm. of the score right yeah. you know it used yeah. to be like you'd be like it's, yeah 100 it's, it's three to three and then like 10 minutes later you're like it's eight to three so They've gotten eight, and they haven't let you get anything. Yeah, and right. then, you know, five minutes later, you're still at three, and people are like, oh, my gosh. Whereas you don't see the Maniac that. siding out. Right. Yeah. Even though you may side out every time now, there's that point going up. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you lose focus of the just the side. Yeah, out. totally. But I think that mentality is important. <laughs> so. I know Anna was big on that mm-hmm. when she was at SC. Is that kind of a big philosophy <clears throat> for you still? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it was big when I played yeah. as well. I th- I just think it's foolproof, right? If, if you can side Shout out. Because now, now, nowadays game, and I tell players this all the time, it's like, count this, the big score and see what it really is. You mm-hmm. know, your games might be three to two. Yeah. But technically, if you win the toss, if your side out game is really solid and you're not going to give up thing, you need to score one point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like you start thinking that and some people that like freaks them out yeah and but it's true is that going to usually happen no but is it possible absolutely mm-hmm. 1919 you side out and now you're 2019 yeah and then you score a point and then you break it down to you know just okay if siding out is the priority when do i side out best mm-hmm. when i'm getting a good set when do i get the best sets when i'm passing like yeah yeah. But like, as, it's hard to preach that to yeah. young kids and stuff, yeah. right? Like, but I feel like that's why, growing up in Hawaii, like it was just so. I feel like that's all they taught us mm-hmm. was how to pass. Mm-hmm. Even indoors, like we didn't get coached on the beach. Indoors, we were just passing all the time, and then they didn't teach us how to block or hit. They were just like, "Yeah, you can figure that out." Like your kids, like of course yeah. you want to block and hit. It was just pass all I the think time the and biggest, defense, like yeah. yeah. I think that's so true. The biggest part is getting the 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 athlete to understand that you hitting the ball out just now is not the problem. Right. <laughs> right. Like the problem right. happened uh, about three or four seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always happens three or four seconds ago. It's you rarely, mm-hmm. you know, that everything's perfect. You know, sure, you got stuff. Right. But the athlete who gets so married to the points and they, you know, they this pass is 30 feet off and then the set's way off and then they fall down hitting this ball and it hits the back line and they're like excited. And I'm like, what are you excited about? <laughs> this is garbage. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to get into that mindset. Like, yep. that was not good. Yeah. 100%. Rather than like, hey, we got the point. Like, there's, I mean, it's different, right? At the top level, like you, you get away with one, and you're like, ah, yeah, you know, 100%. like, and it's a yeah. But from a deep down understanding of where the errors are taking place, yeah, rather than just being like, did we win or or not? You know, did yep. I win because the ball clipped the top of the tape and flipped down, whereas the defender was actually waiting on that terrible shot, right? Yeah. So that's well, yeah. that's hard. We've been like, you know, coming back, we every tournament we're watching film trying to break it all down at the highest level now, right? Everything just keeps coming back to, if I can just lift my pass yeah. two feet higher, then I get my set two feet higher, yep. and now I'm back to being me. Right. But for some reason, I've been keeping it a little lower, I've been getting my set a little lower, now I'm not high-pointing the ball, right. and it just changes my whole game. Right. And you have to make a decision like, a little It's not quicker. like we're, we're in there looking for, like we are watching hours of film, but like yeah. we're looking for like these crazy concepts and then it's just like hey try like pass a little higher it's like boom game's back (laughs) we're golden (laughs) like so true yeah when you get to the higher level or you've been doing this forever coaches pro players it's like you start to learn the value in that and you're just like 
that's when you start getting really interested and it starts being fun yeah. passing. Right. Whereas like as a kid, sometimes you're just bored. Yeah. Because you don't realize the value. Like, well, right, yeah. getting the kill is the yeah, part that gets the point. Stuff kills. Yeah, races. that's the part that gets the point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I've started doing is once I got a lot more confident in my sad out game is on, on the toss, either first set, third set, whatever, mm-hmm. is if I don't win, because usually whoever wins will either take the good side or receive, I'll always take the bad side. Because if you start out on the bad side and you trust your side out and you win, it like it can break some teams. Because right. we did that in Virginia Beach in our quarterfinals, which was a big one, because if we won, we qualified for Hermosa. Uh-huh. So it was the third set, and I won the toss, and I took the bad side. And JD, my partner, was like, Messages What's your problem? Your too. Yeah, <laughs> He's right. like, why'd you do that? Right. So, well, if we win the bad side, they're done. Like, right. it'll break them. And we won 4-1, went to the good side, won 4-1, it was 8-2, yeah. and it was game over. People overthink And then you get it. the choice yeah. They overthink the that. too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, so people that's, totally are <laughs> yeah. partially why I just don't care. Hey, hey, try it. What side do you want? Yeah. Oh, okay. And if you take the bad yeah, side, sure. the math works out that if it's like in 1817 or 1916, you'll end on the good side. Mm. So. See? There's a lot of logic to it. <laughs> Might seem but counterintuitive. When you get the choice in the second set, you're probably gonna take the <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I'll just take I'll just take receive, and if I can't, then I take the bad side. Right. It's usually just what I ended up. There doing. is that can backfire sometimes when when you know when you go back and you're like they took what? <laughs> <laughs> we got the good side and the side. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and like, receive. These guys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> well, Delaney uh, used to do this drill where. Because when she was coaching at Pepperdine, Zoom has a windy beach, yeah. and they'd practice in the afternoons. Yeah. And so she – basically, they just had a rule at Pepperdine where if you lost on the good side, if they're playing sets, you just lost the match. <laughs> and then you restart it. And I think about that all the time. If like, you lost, like, the If you're on the, the good side. side and you lose that side, just a 4-3 switch. Like a 4-3 then, three down. Th- yeah, then you, the lo- then you lose. Yeah, Ooh. and you go back to 0-0. Zero, zero. I, like I think about that a lot. I like Especially that. when I'm on the bad side, like, we beat them. Yeah. If we beat them on the bad side, we win. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that every That's time. Why it's good. I go yeah. blank sometimes. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're like we just had good side, bad side in Latvia, and then we switched to the good side. Now we got the good side. I was like, oh, didn't know we were on the bad side. <laughs> it's like, whatever. It's all yeah. the same to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's uh, what's next for you then? What's your summer look like? You know that uh, it's. It's just, you know, it's such a blessing to have won three in a row. Like, it hasn't really even mm-hmm. sank in. Got to like, update your shirt. Yeah. Got to update. His shirt back for the viewers back, and listeners, back. it says back-to-back back national champs, but it's, now it's got to be back-to-back-to-back to back to back <laughs> right. national champs. Yeah, we got to print the new shirt. But more importantly, like, oh, you know, get some downtime. It's been busy because it's it's awesome. It got so much exposure, you know, when we got back. um, it was fun. We got the twins on Sports Center, which mm. was a lot of fun. And the twins are Nicole and Audrey yeah. Norse. Yep. Nick and Nick and Audrey, and um, just did a lot of media with local stuff in LA. And um, we actually got invited to the White House last week Sick. and went to the White House with some other championship teams. That was really great. Um, and just doing fun stuff. I actually got to go to the uh, LA LAFC game. Where they oh, yeah. have the uh, falconer. Have you ever seen that? Where they have an honorary person <laughs> launch their falcon. So you get to put the glove on and, yeah, the thing and it flies around and swoops down. And it's just such a, a cool thing. And uh, just having some fun doing some stuff. And yeah. then recruiting opened up for the class of 25 okay. on June 15th. So June 15th is the big day for all these high school sophomores that are now available to contact. So it's it's a crazy game for about a week that these girls are getting offers yeah. and back it, you know it's it kind of opens the floodgates there they can message you all they want they can send you video they can do the whole thing before june 15th but on june 15th it's like almost everything shifts yeah. right now the the coaches are actually calling them yeah and huh. uh i you know i truly believe like the recruiting is half the battle you got to get good kids that are that are good character student athletes that are hungry that love to compete and love to work with their teammates and um i think that's where we've done a really good job of getting the right 
type of, of athlete in. I think, you know, the one of the first players that I got was Haley Harward, um, uh, then Julia Scholes, um, and it's just as the years go go by you start to figure it out more who um who works for your squad and who doesn't who's die hard you know someone mm-hmm. who you call and they're like oh my gosh you know like se's calling like hey that's where i want to go you you want someone passionate mm-hmm. about where you know rather than uh, weighing a few different offers and mm-hmm. You know, you want that. I think that passion when you're really playing for a squad you love is important. Mm-hmm. Totally. And um, so, I, anyways, I'm off on a tangent a little bit, but it's it's been busy, yeah, uh, which is cool. So I got to shut it down, yeah, a little bit. So you want that separation because we're back in school late August. Okay. But um, I have a lot of time in uh, July to 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 chill and then really excited about broadcasting i know hermosa is gonna be a little bit watered down because of a conflict not um, on the guys side yeah we guys decided to guys stay fully oh nice we just nice. decided to stay home so okay. i think only uh miles and andy will be gone nice yeah so, the girls um, side i would guess the girls, the girls, girls are very watered more. down yeah the girls are a little more like oh, we're doing we're on the world tour and that's yeah. what we're doing yeah the guys are like any chance to stay home we're gonna do it yeah it's got to be so hard to skip an event you can yeah. walk to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. So that and then the, the Gold Series, you know, in yep. August with Atlanta and, and, and Manhattan. And then I think um, Chicago's in Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Again. We'll try to be more entertaining this time. No, I don't think, <laughs> I don't know. If it was, I don't think it was your match that I was referring to. Um, Probably the one that got cut off. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe that was it. But... Um, no, it's it's always so fun to broadcast. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. To you know, I'm so happy that I'm still a part of it and can keep my finger on the pulse of of what's mm-hmm. going on. And mm-hmm. it's this race is going to be fun, mm-hmm. right? It's it's kind of crazy, and not only on the uh, the men's side, but on the women's side. It's the women's is almost how, crazier, how right? Crazy how deep women's it is. is nuts. Yeah, three of the top five teams in the world are Americans. Yeah, and in the Olympic ranking, or yeah. just. That's in the right. Olympic rankings, right, yeah. but at this right now, the Olympic rankings are pretty similar to entry mm-hmm. rankings. Do most of the teams have similar amount of finishes. Yeah, same amount of finishes, except for a handful of the Brazilian women are at like eight events already. Oh, geez, wild. So they're really high up. Yeah, so that'll yeah. even out soon enough. But the yeah. top teams on the women's are it's pretty similar to what the world rankings would be. When is the soonest we can get to 12 finishes? Like, what's the 12th event? Probably sometime in the fall. Nobody's going to have played 12 straight, though. No. I mean, there's a couple that are trying right now. Like, Famela, Cordelli, and Toledo. They've played every event. Mm. And their average finish is not great, but they're, like, number six. But they're not really, like, a true... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's just... It'll it'll even out soon enough. But I think in the fall, someone will hit 12. Yeah. So what's the rundown from here for you, like? How does the summer look? Not AVP, but international. There's not. Hermosa was, well, so Hermosa and Manhattan are both conflicts. Yeah, so we'll tell me, like, elites. what your international. So we're going to skip Stad now because we're in the elite qualifiers. Uh-huh. And now everyone's starting to realize that that's like a death trap. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you could qualify and then break pool and then you're getting great points. Yeah. But if you don't qualify and even don't break pool, like it could send you into what everyone's calling points hell because oh. it's only three out of four finishes. You can't afford oh to have gosh. more than one bad finish. And a few teams have like essentially eliminated themselves from like world champs, therefore maybe Olympic qualifying just by losing in some of these. Elite so you're qualifiers. kind of setting yourself up for like the, you, major, you have like to play the points champ. game like crazy right now. Cause the world champs offer way more. Yes. Right. So if you, whoever gets top, tens at world champs is gonna have significantly better chances and the winner of the world champs get an automatic right yes mm-hmm. but not for the u.s because the u.s has decided it's the top two are going to go either way so you don't get the bid but you're going to get so many points you're basically getting the bid that's interesting you'd earn yeah. it for the federation yeah. yeah so it's like if if the u.s <clears throat> five team wins it <clears throat> They don't want the five team to go. They want the top two to go. The the federation has control. Yes, of the bid. but mo- every other country, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah. The I just I can't imagine a scenario that you win world champs and don't qualify anyway. 
Yeah, you'd have to go <laughs> off kind of crazy. for one of that and then really yeah. suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and world champs. Well, you'd probably sit out for a lot of events just to make sure you hold that. Yeah, yeah hold that. Because that, if that's one of your three finishes, like, right. yeah. you're going to be a top seed yeah. in everything. Where uh, Where is that being held this year? Uh, Mexico. Mexico, yeah. Oh, that's right. Basically yeah. Mexico City. Yeah. In like three three or four Three cities. different locations within, within the city. Tlaxcala. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which Tlaxcala be cool. was wild last year. You yeah, didn't go, altitude right? altitude as well. No. So yes. Highest altitude I've ever played. It was like 7,500 feet. Wow. Can't hit a jump surf in bounds. That's insane. Yeah, everyone's in system. The, the, the side out percentages are going to be astronomical. Deep, deep sand, too. Which will be a crazy combo. Because they yeah. said it's the same sand we played it with in Tepic. Okay. And we were like slipping and sliding. Like, wow, cool arena, though. The center court's a... Uh, uh, an old bullfighting room, <clears throat> and it's sweet. That's awesome. It's, it was a fun atmosphere. Yeah, Prague looks cool. That like factory. Or oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Ostrava. Ostrava. Yeah, you, uh, it's cool. Republic, it's not like the most like entertaining stop in general, yeah. but like the venue alone and the uniqueness of it, it's really cool. Yeah. I think it's a good stop. I I'd be cool to not go back. <laughs> <laughs> I never. Went I've been there. like four times now. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I'm yeah. good. So I got and a I story for you. You talking about elevation? I had we played in Aspen once. Yeah, and I had I had eleven aces in a game of fifteen. No kidding. Yeah. Jump serve. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So next time you think the altitude, yeah, I'm going to Denver next weekend. Serving. You got to tell yeah, me your you secret. Still ball it. <laughs> yeah. It was a different ball back then. I mean, it was it was a Wilson, and the ball's different now. Well, you got to yeah. think if you can keep a jump serve in. Now it's way harder to pass right yeah because the trajectory and the way it's coming up on you rising on you is different you just like ping Maybe. people right here yeah i don't know how it was but it was at that elevation which mm. is insane but um that's awesome you that's say like, 11 aces in a match to 15 yeah. <laughs> it's a good number yeah, <laughs> your partner number. was not disappointed in you that <laughs> yeah. what did your partner i think do? that <laughs> pull was, up a chair i think that was it might have been eric and i's first event together Eric was and just way to show off for him. Eric was just sitting <laughs> sitting in the corner, just cruising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost that one to Karch and Adam Johnson. That was a good team. Our kind of rival going into that 2000 Olympics. Yeah, it seemed like it was just back and forth, back and forth. But that sounds cool. It sounds like you're in a good position. Yeah, I mean we're just kind of getting country rolling. quota battle is yeah. is pretty much where it's going to be at, like every year. But yeah, we're doing pretty good. What is your next international event then? Because you're skipping Hamburg, probably. Um, yeah, we're probably going to skip Hamburg as well to play Manhattan. Hamburg's during Manhattan. Yeah. Stad's during her most. Both elites. Yeah, it's tough. So it's risky to skip them. But we're probably just going to do it because, I mean, why That's do you play the sport? You play it to play in Manhattans and Hermosas yeah. <clears throat> and qualify for the Olympics. But, like. Yeah. You got time. If we were, if we were auto main draw. Mm hmm. We might have to consider just skipping, but right. especially when you're going for a three-peat on the pier, right? It's hard, oh. it's hard to skip that one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we like three peats, right? <laughs> if we like three peats, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, that's hard to pass. Yeah, you got to go for that. Yeah, that's that's awesome. But no, it looks like we'll be able to hit potentially all the AVPs after that. Nice. But the next run's going to be Hermosa, Portugal, Edmonton. Montreal, Atlanta. It's so all five in a row. Montreal, wow. So it'll be five in a row for us before we come back for a, maybe a week or two. Yeah. And then we head off to more. So it, it's it's about to get heavy. How many miles are you doing these days? I hit, I have 1K every year. Every so year. over 100,000, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> FC every time now? This, this year I'm going to go way over yeah. for sure. But most flights? Business? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting upgraded it's to get crazy. When, but I have to fly on United, not a partner of United. Right. Oh, okay. And a lot of times yeah. you just buy the like, you, it's six hundred dollars cheaper, but you fly on Swiss out there. But then I can't right. get my upgrades on Swiss, so it's like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it makes a difference. I don't think it used to be like that. I think it used to be. That's what I thought. I used yeah, to call and then be like, okay, we'll the... request from Swiss to do it. Yeah. Now they're not doing that anymore. So I have to wow. get a United flight to Europe, yeah. or I'll get upgraded to like Newark, Got it. which is like eh, n yeah. not the same. Do you still are you United? Yes. Does United have anything like um, I know American used to have those one way upgrades? They'd give you like if you were one K. Yeah. 
You'd yeah, get like there's eight one way upgrades, which were massive. Now they have because um, you could buy an economy ticket to yeah, South Africa and, and upgrade they had it. to bump you yeah. one class of service. So you were flying. They give business. you these plus points now. Okay. And then if the flight's longer, then it costs you more plus points. So it's a points game. But if you stay 1K, they give you a lot of points. So nice. You're all about the points games. I hate points. <laughs> in all. It's like you have to play it I when have you're to in play the game. game. I <laughs> tried not to last year, and it kind of screwed me. I did yeah. about four years in a row of 100 plus. And yeah. it was cool because you had to do it. But yeah. now that you're out, you're like... Yeah. <laughs> well you want to get to a, if i can get to a million miles before i retire then then i'm gold and my spouse is gold for life nice so that's, that's a good benchmark yeah but i'm I only got, like you're on pace for it i'm only like 550 550 thousand now i don't know how i did it but i got lifetime platinum damn they said oh, it was two million miles but oh two I million i don't know how Holy I, I, yeah. I don't think i'm traveling as much as that's a lot of miles but well, Loyola told like, me he was like three million on american or yeah. something i remember he always was american as well yeah but uh now it's, it's nice to have platinum and not have to earn it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh 100 percent. but it, i mean it's laughable that you're on a, you're on the waiting list and you're like 25th <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> there's so many executive platinums now oh yeah. i know exactly and if you fly to the wrong airport like going to newark good luck because yeah. it's those business right guys right, who are right. going coast to coast <laughs> if you go to like one of the smaller airports then then you'll get it yeah yeah, yeah. dang good to have you back on man yeah i'm glad we made it work me. always a did pleasure we, did we do it last year we did. Yeah, we did. We did it. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> For every national championship. Yeah, we just bring Let's you back on it. every night. Let's nat- keep it going. Every natty. Perfect. We got a, a solid team coming up this year, and uh, but everybody's continuing to gun. Yeah. But. Um, Hey, let's make sure we do it earlier in the day. <laughs> yeah, right. It works early. Uh, yeah. We, we took us a long time to coordinate. That yeah, list. totally. Well, with, now with us traveling and playing, right, and right. then you've got stuff to do. It scheduling yeah. during the summer is a bear, but. Yeah made it happen yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. thanks for having me yeah thanks get, for coming get on you through the we'll, traffic we'll definitely Good luck. we'll do it we'll do it again yeah Heck after yeah. you get your fourth 90 you get your fourth pier let's go Ooh. third third can i get two for one third <laughs> trash double? trying to get his get fourth. A double yeah <laughs> exactly all right all right, all right. thanks guys Great. pleasure shoots mm. shoots <laughs>